Well, good morning. Good morning. And on this wonderful Lord's Day, welcome to the Guilford Community Church. Special welcome to those who are watching. It is the first Sunday of the month, and as is our custom, we gather around the Lord's table. Table open to everyone present. Immediately following our worship service, please join us downstairs for coffee hour. And near the center of the aisle, we have a sign-in booklet. If you would sign your name in, if you're not currently on the church email list and would like to be included, please include your email. Then next Saturday at 10 o'clock right here in our sanctuary, there will be a memorial service for Jonathan Gellert. And then a, a final thanks to Kameo for the wonderful concert last night and for everyone who participated in that. And now I just invite you to take a moment to reflect on why on a beautiful day like this, you chose to come here. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> I'm singing a song in Hawaiian this morning. I was in Hawaii working and a friend, a uh, Hawaiian friend, would dance hula as I sang this song. She currently has stage four cancer, so I'd like to dedicate this to Malu. <laughs> Make a la hele o yesu, i halu vai aku vai. Make kanaka o pio hano hano, kaolana e ka vai vai. Pane mai.
Thank you, Wendy. That was really beautiful. Please join me in a word of prayer. We join our hearts to one another in this time, this unique hour that is unlike any hour in our week. Because we have set this time aside to be in community, to incline our hearts into the spirit of the universe that we might be fully awake. Though we are mortal, we recognize that the universe was already ancient when we showed up and will likely continue to exist without limits long after we are gone. And so we pray that we might be mindfully present in this moment to one another and to the larger reality all around us, that our lives might bring light to our world as did Jesus's, whose words we now repeat, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now stand as we sing together hymn number eight, Praise to the Living God. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, am I a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal? And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions 
and I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends, but as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part, but when, we com but when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. But when I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. Here ends the reading. Now we're going to have a little bit of a detour in the service this morning. So I uh, would like to invite Stu Ross, co-chair of the pastor staff, um, human relation, uh, Human Resources Committee, and I'd like to call up Michael and Cindy. Cindy's sick. Oh. <laughs> Cindy, come on down. <laughs> really. As most of you know, this is Michael and Cindy's 20th anniversary with us. So on behalf of the membership committee of Guilford Community Church, we would like to present this gift to Michael and Cindy Graham in recognition of their 20th anniversary with the Guilford Community Church. Michael, your leadership has been steady and reliable during the best of times in our lives and the hardest times of our lives. We appreciate all you have accomplished over the last 20 years. Our little community church would not be the same without you here guiding us through an expansion, growth of our congregation, and then pivoting during the pandemic and on to an online format. Your sermons are thoughtful and thought-provoking. You make us think. Not always. <laughs> you call us to act. We are extremely thankful for you. Cindy, your warm smile and hugs are always very much appreciated and needed. Your voice is angelic and your partnership with our favorite pastor is steady and strong. We thank you for all the gifts you bring to us. Michael and Cindy, we love you both and your family and appreciate all you do for the Guilford Community Church and for the Lakes Region of New Hampshire. After the service, please join us in the fellowship hall for coffee and cupcakes vegan and gluten-free for Michael and Cindy to celebrate this dynamic duo. Thank you. Now back. I'll put them right here. And now back to our regularly scheduled program. Thank you very much, and if Douglas and Henry will come forward, we're going to have our time together. I was tickled pink to see the two of you walk in the door. And I was happy that you brought your mom as well. You know, you've been coming a couple of weeks now, three or four times, and I don't think I know your last name. What's your last name? Henry? Henry and Douglas. Oh, it's Henry Douglas? What's your last name? Rocker? Walkley, that's a beautiful name. Now, what's the biggest word? You're going to go to the village nursery school next year, right? I think you said Tuesdays and Thursdays. Is that right? And you're going to learn a lot of things in the nursery school. The nursery school is a wonderful, wonderful place. And, 
And on those Tuesdays and Thursdays, you're going to walk by my office. And a lot of kids wave, and I wave back. It makes my day. Because my grandkids live a long way away. I don't get to see them very often. So it's going to be exciting seeing the two of you. What's the biggest word? The biggest word you know? Tractor? (laughs) That's a pretty big word, isn't it? Yeah. You have a John Deere tractor? <laughs> and I like that. Do you, ever, do you ever sit on your mom or dad's lap and take a cruise? Yeah. What do you use the John Deere tractor to do? The John Deere was holding up the trailer? That's wonderful. So I was thinking about big words today like tractor, and I looked up, Mr. Google knows a lot. The biggest word in English has 45 letters. And you know, I struggle with words with three letters. So I won't even give this a shot, but there's another big word I know that I bet maybe, maybe, maybe you know, but if you don't know, I bet a lot of people here know it. It was from the song Carolyn was playing for us. What was that word? Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious? Even though the sound of it is something quite atrocious? Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. That's a big word, isn't it? But you know what? Size is overrated, (laughs) said the short guy in the robe. (laughs) And I think maybe the most important word in the English language is love. And that's what we learn from our scripture reading, that love is a powerful word and it's the most important thing we can ever do is to love one another. Uh, Yeah. It's really hot outside. It is really hot outside. You imagine what it's like wearing a robe (laughs) on a day like this? Yeah. You can't get it out. Well, I want you to remember Love is what it's all about. Thanks for coming up.
Thank you, choir. That was beautiful. This afternoon at 2 o'clock, there's a private graveside service for R.J. Ilg, Marty, and R.J., longtime members of the church. Uh, Marty, uh, R.J. was only 59, so I'd ask you to keep the Ilg family in your thoughts and prayers. And as the situation continues to unfold in Ukraine and other parts of the world, let's not let our hearts grow numb to the horrible atrocities taking place. So let us be in a spirit of prayer. Though freed from creed and orthodoxy, we yet turn to the example of the one who reached out to touch a leper. A leper that most religious folk would rather die than touch. We owe much to the one who healed without payment and who loved without measure. We acknowledge that we have rarely lived up to that example. But we are thankful that today it is up to us to be that example. Today is a new day in which we can try again. This is our hope and our prayer. Amen. And now please stand as we sing hymn number 388, Help Us Accept Each Other.
I mention a lot of names in my sermon, and I'm undoubtedly going to forget some. I apologize ahead of time. If I forgot to name a loved one, please email me. I'd like to keep a list. Um, already during the service, I've scribbled a couple of other names I forgot, and I woke up thinking about a person this morning, so just forgive me in, in advance. Last week, a reporter from the Daily Sun stopped by to ask me a few questions. You've been here 20 years, Michael. What's that been like? Now, most of the questions were good ones. They really got me thinking. One, however, made me laugh. The reporter asked, do you remember the first sermon you preached at the Guilford Community Church? That brought forth a big chuckle because I said, my Lord, I don't remember last week's sermon. <laughs> But here's what I do remember distinctly about that first service, May 5th, I think, 2002. Right before church, someone asked me to pay, pray for Bob Crosley. Now, I didn't know Bob at the time. Many of you did. The person mentioned a few things that Bob had been struggling for some time. He was active in the choir, just an exceptional human being. So I prayed for him during the service. A couple of weeks later, I would meet him, and he thanked me for the prayer. Two and a half years later, I did his funeral. As I think about our 20 years together, I think the first thing that comes to mind isn't all of the good things we've done and accomplished, but the tough times we've shared together. Over the past two decades, I've done well over 600 funerals. I had one yesterday, I have one this afternoon. About 100 of those were for church members, people who called the Guilford Community Church their spiritual home. Death has brought us together time after time. It's how the Aaronstams became a part of this family when their 11-month-old son, Aiden, died. So too, Diane and Steve Anthony, whose first visit to the church was to attend Judy Wernig's funeral. Some of those deaths were tragic. They broke our hearts. Death came far too early or completely unexpectedly. Others certainly brought sadness, but they followed good, long lives. Some of those people had names like Seth and Peg Keller, B and Ed Gibbon, Gibbs, Ellen and Helen Lawrence, Glenn and Patsy Dillon, Gordon and Hel Helen Denley, Stan and June Osgood, Milo and Ann Milo and Ann Munir, Skip and Daphne Fortin, Bob and Barbara Partridge, John and Shirley Fowler, Wayne and Shirley Snow, Russ and Patsy Moore, Beth and Tom DeMeo, Jeff and Jeannie Pacilli, Dick and Doreen Waite. Arthur and Natalie Wormer, Carl and Marion Gardner, Dave and Ivy Merrill, Jerry and Jim McKenna, Ann and Jim DePoyan, Walter and Martha Berghahn. And there was Milo Bacon and Pete Harris and Martha Colburn and Gordy Weymouth and Kay Wolfson, Gary Allen, great Gary Allen, David Ames, Alice Hill, Bud Fortier, Lee Burt, Norma Harrison, Bob Elliott, Yvette Johnson, Richard Geyer, Bill Littlefield, Janice Kirk, Dottie Labonte, Corey and Dennis McAllister, Steve Anthony, Bob Castellan, Bob Daniel, Jim Rupert, Jack Stevenson, Joe Scattergood, Don Curtis, Roy Carson, Harold Dexter, Elliott Hastings, Eddie Bray, Fred Davidson, Wendy's dad, Steve Richard, Richmond, Helen Bonin, Jack Clark, Carol Hopper, Phil Merriam, Dale Eddy, Barbara Houck, Jerry LaCroix, Suzanne Whitney, Jim DeBettencourt, Pat Nix Ford, Bob Henderson. Then there was Don Sorensen, Bob Osborne, Dorothy Parker, Pat Pegg, Ann Carlson, Alan Beard, Ken Reese, and Carol Geller. Most of those people and I'll bet you knew many of them. Most of those people lived good, long lives. But sadly, for some people, death came far, far too early, like it did for Aidan Ehrenstam or Nicholas Polisi or 
Mark Godick or Carolyn Drake or Stephen Heather Richardson, C.J. Graham, Kevin Lacasse, Lacasse, John Bradley Thompson, Doug Moyer, David Anthony. Our hearts broke and the pain of those losses still lingers. Sadness has certainly visited all of us and gathered us together. So too has great joy though. Probably the greatest thrill of being part of a place like this is the privilege of watching our children grow up. A few weeks after I arrived, I baptized Laurel Gingrich. She's now a sophomore in college. I spent a lot of time this past week thinking about some of the children who grew up in this church over the past 20 years. Katie Bryant was still known to us as Katie Allen when I started. And as a senior in high school, Katie served on our diaconate. Now she's married and the mother of a wonderful young lady, Bella Bryant. So too, Amber Greenlaw grew up in this church and her sister, Christy. AJ. AJ was a sophomore when I started. And so over the years, we've got to watch others with names like Ross and Stewart and Gingrich and Sawyer and Wernig and Baxter and Buckley and Cook and Snow and Hamp and Edson, Blanford and Dormady, Nelson and Tomlinson, Madeiro, Fleck and Stowe, Mercer and Leggett, Watson, Barron and Berghahn. All of those people are now young adults, some starting their own families. Some have brought their children here to be baptized. And right this very moment, well, not literally, but we are privileged to witness Nick and Anya and Zach Aronstan, Mackenzie and Ethan Royce, Clark and Bryn Blackwelder, Bella Bryant, Brooke and Addison Barron, Jack and Jovi Carter, Addie and Drew Hodgson, Melody and April Wright, Landon McLean, Olivia Cece and William Tucker, Logan Werender, Emma and Megan Legro, Carly Lyons, Riley and Taylor Marsh, Callie, AJ and Renee Henderson, Mason Beckett and Lola Adams and little Asher Bates. Then there's Evan and Ryan and Mary Ferrugio, Charlotte and Beatrix Wood, Ben and Joe Smith, Yo-Yo Tripp, Penny, Kate and Nora Clark, Brilla, Prescott, Lily Maynard, and Kenzie Leroy, and most recently, Douglas and Henry. All of them are beginning to flourish right before our eyes, discovering things about themselves and the wonderful world we call home, learning more from the things we do than the things we say to them. But how lucky are we? Now, I think an honest assessment of our children and youth program would lead us to conclude that it has really been struggling for about four or five years. The struggle predates COVID. And we need to reconnect with all those families I mentioned. I hope we can rebuild the program so that our children and their children will be exposed to a faith that is thoughtful, spacious, and engaged in making the world a better place. One thing I'm pretty certain of is that the church program, the church children's program of tomorrow will not look like the one we grew up in. Kids are way too busy. But the need for meaningful connections with peers and adults, the the need for connection to something larger than their own life is still real. And we need to figure out how to address that. Now, when this adventure began 20 years ago, None of us could have predicted how things would turn out. Some of you had the over-under on my tenure at 10 years. (laughs) The average pastor, how long do you think the average pastor stay is in a church? 3.8 years. You should be on your fifth minister. And most of the other churches in the Lakes region have followed that pattern. 
I'm grateful you are not on your fifth pastor celebrating her first Sunday today. <laughs> I'm grateful most of all for how you have loved me and let me grow. I don't understand faith the world, church, or God like I did 20 years ago. I have a good pastor friend who said to me, I know, Michael, I have grown, but my church doesn't want me to challenge them. They only want to be comforted. I can, he said, I can never say, I can never share what I really believe from the pulpit. I think lots of ministers would say the same thing. How utterly sad. To my knowledge, no other profession operates that way. So thank you for letting me grow. How sad would it be if we believed exactly what we believed 20 years ago? And then thank you for letting me challenge you from time to time. We don't have to agree, but all of us should aspire to have a faith that is thoughtful, that can stand up to scrutiny, that doesn't believe science is the enemy that can rest contently knowing it doesn't have to have all of, ans all of the answers. A faith that recognizes life is shrouded in mystery and that love is always, always more important than being right. A faith that enables us to walk through life confidently humble and securely vulnerable. One that knows that the 5.8 billion people who aren't Christians can't all be wrong. I hope we are always a church that recognizes the opposite of a fact is a falsehood, but the opposite of one profound truth may very well be another profound truth. I hope we have a faith that fully embraces that how we make people feel is way more important than how what we say and that long after people forget what we have taught them, they will remember how we made them feel. Now, none of us knows what tomorrow holds, but I certainly hope it holds us together. Amen. We gather around the table, a table that has that, an old familiar story that goes something like this, that on the night that Jesus would be betrayed, he took a loaf of bread. He blessed it and broke it and said, my body will be broken just like this bread has been broken. And when the supper was over, he took a cup filled with ordinary wine and said, this cup symbolizes a new covenant sealed with my love. When you drink it, do so remembering me. And so now ministering in his name, we offer to you the bread of life.
Together, let us eat the bread of life. And now in the name of the crucified Jesus, but the ever-living, ever-present Christ, we offer to you the cup of the new covenant. Together, let us taste and know the goodness of life. Having finished the supper, the disciples departed singing a song. Please stand as we close this service singing hymn number 372, God, You Have Set Us. We'll do verses 1, 3, and 5. 1, 3, and 5.
once again thank you for your love and all your support. And may we go forth on this beautiful day to love as we have been loved. Amen. Thank you.